Today, I'm excited to share with you my process in creating 15 cards using up my jelly plate papers for Kendra's card challenge number 10. Hi everyone, it's Steph here from Chaos in the Craft Room and thank you so much for joining me again or welcome if you are new to my channel. These are the papers that I will be using for Kendra's Card Challenge 10 and I've created all of them using my jelly plate and then just done some stamping over the top of them and I'll have a video posted soon on how I created these papers. I made sure I kept the colours of the papers quite simple but of course you can create the papers however you would like. And some of them like this one are a little bit busier than others and I've added some texture paste as well onto that for a bit of dimension. If you are new to Kendra's card challenges, I'll pop a link in the description box below on exactly how to cut up the six by six pieces of paper. So you need six of them that are six by six inches and you cut them up to make 15 cards and Kendra has a free downloadable template on exactly how to do that. And every quarter there's a new card challenge. So different designs and card designs for you to get used to. So let's start with sketch number one. So you can see the sketch on the right hand side of my screen. And my piece of pattern paper is the one with the black background, which is paper A. And it doesn't matter what paper you use for paper A through to F. You can label them as you like. I usually go through to see which papers I use together on similar cards and what papers I want to go together on that paper. But I usually make sure that all my papers go together well out of the ones that I choose. So it doesn't really matter. And then you can use any other paper, either plain paper. I'm using papers from my jelly plate so it all matches and they're the same colours and goes together or you can use other papers from your paper pack if you're using um, paper from a paper pack. And don't feel like you have to stick exactly to Kendra's card design, they're really just a rough guide and a way for you to get more familiar with different card designs to make the process a little bit easier to create your cards. So to create this little flag to have on top of the card, I'm just doing a few measurements to, to make sure I get um, the, the points in the center of the bit of paper as I don't have a die with this exact shape. I don't have to stick to this shape, but I think it's quite a cute little banner to have. So I'm just gonna cut it out by hand myself. And the glue that I am using is the Helmer's Crafter's Choice Premium Craft Glue. Glue. It's one of my favorites. Uh, it's a clear glue and it's alcohol based and I find it really easy to work with. It can be a little bit stringy at times which is why you'll see me sometimes pulling a few strings away but it's not sticky uh, and I find it really easy to pull off. It doesn't uh, damage the card as such. And as it's alcohol based, it doesn't warp the paper like water based glue. And this is my final card. So now we're on to sketch number two. So this first bit of paper is the piece uh, from paper A. That's as per the cutting template from Kendra. And then these additional layers are the other pieces of paper. And now that background is one that I've also created from my jelly plate. I love that it's not a perfect print. I, I quite like the for some of my more mixed media style cards to look a little bit messier in a way. It doesn't have to be pristine perfect. It sort of depends what type of card I'm creating to what type of print I go for. As I knew I was going to chop off the ends of that layer as this bit of pattern paper is going across the card, I didn't bother cutting it down to the perfect size as that will be trimmed off anyway. For my thinner bits of paper, I always use double-sided tape rather than glue to prevent any warping. And then I'm just trying to decide in which direction to have this piece of pattern paper. And to put on top of this card, I'm going to use the Picket Fence Studio Stamp and Die Eco Girl set, which I absolutely love this. 
I think it matches the card really well. And I make sure I'll list everything that I use in my cards in my description box below. And if you like this video, I'd absolutely love your support to hit the like and subscribe button. And I just make sure when I stick this piece of pattern paper or the strip of the pattern paper down that the the ends of the pattern paper, so not the border, but the actual pattern paper is passed or in line with the end of the card. And that way I can ensure the pattern paper goes all the way across. And to decorate this card, I'm just cutting out a few butterflies, which I have from one of the actual papers that I made for this card challenge. But when I had to trim it down to be a six by six piece of paper, for Kendra's cutting template, I had some leftover, so I just cut out the actual butterflies uh, from that bit of paper, and they worked perfectly for decorating this card. And this is definitely one of my favourites. And at the end, I'd love to hear what your favourite card is out of this set of cards as well. So now on to sketch number three. So I first try to stick down the two pieces of paper B and uh, I had to make sure I stuck them down in the same direction. So I've got the pink to the left and the yellow to the right, although you don't have to do that. I just wanted it to line up. And then I'm just using up some leftover strips from one of my jelly plate pieces of papers that I've been cutting up for this challenge anyway on this card. So. Great to use up some leftover strips. I have a box and I keep all my leftover strips in as well. And that way if I am looking for an extra strip for this sort of card design, I can just go to that box and use them up. And that way if I have some really nice papers that I've created with just a little strip left, I feel like I can still use them rather than throwing it out. And with this card design, it does say to leave the strip of paper on the left, uh, I guess, fully exposed and don't not to cover it up with paper A. But I decided that I preferred the look of it with both the strips, the center of the strips covered. So I just stuck it down that way. You can really stick it down as per your preference. And to decorate this card, I'm just using some roses that I've created using a bit of texture paste on top of some paper that I've created on my jelly plate and then fussy cut around it and that way it's got a bit more dimension to it. And then on Kendra's card sketch she's got in the top right corner three dots so that's three little embellishments um, that you can put there. I find when I go to use little embellishments to put there I like to sort of play around with how it looks before sticking them straight on. So I always get a leftover piece of vellum or, or I guess that plastic that the little rhinestones come on. So I can put it down like in this example, feel for how it's going to look. If you haven't seen my previous video, this is where I go through how to create sketch number four. Uh, so please go check that out if you haven't already. I love the design of both of these. And I'll have a link to that in my description box below as well if you want to go check that out. Okay, so now on to sketch number five. So for this one we're using paper B and with a circle layer. And the background, Kendra's recommended to use something embossed, printed, or stenciled. And that's really just to vary it up uh, and also to give us an opportunity to try something different if that's something we don't regularly do. But if you don't want to do that, that's fine as well. So with both of these papers, we've just got a border paper with it. And then to decorate it, I'm using one of my favorite dies, and that's the Cat Scrappiness Stitched Oval Dies. And for my embossing folder, I'm using the Kircher Creations Knitted Embossing Folder and used some black ink 
in the embossed area. For a lot of these cards, I've thought about what sort of design I roughly want, but you'll see me on each of these cards sort of playing around with how I want things laid out as I didn't have everything pre-planned. So you sort of see my thought process as I'm going as well. I love how the jelly plate papers really add a lot of extra texture and feel like a lot of extra dimension as well within the papers. So I'll leave you with some music now for you to watch my design process. And I'll add some comments at the start of every new section for each card. But I wanted to leave in my actual process of sticking everything together as that way you can craft along with me if you want to and get a feel for exactly what pieces you need to cut out for each of the sketches and how I play around with different options as well. So for sketch number six, we've got two pieces of our original pattern papers, paper B and C, and an extra square uh, to go with it, along with layers for each of those components. If you're interested in exactly what dies and stamps that I'm using uh, to decorate my cards, I'll leave them in the description box below as well for you to reference if you're interested. For the background for this card sketch, once again, I'm using a paper that I created using my jelly plates with some bricks. So that was good fun and some distress inks and some water as well. And the extra little square that I'm using is actually a leftover piece from a, another jelly plate paper that I've already cut out. So it was a great way to use that piece up. And then finally, I'm decorating the cards with some cogwheels from the Kesa Craft dies. And I wanted these little squares to pop up, so I'm going to use some foam tape to stick them down. If you have any questions or comments, please pop them in the chat below. I absolutely love hearing your thoughts and comments as well. And I'll also be checking out everyone's cards who post them on Kenja's Facebook page as I love seeing how you all interpret these card designs as well. For sketch number seven, it's assuming you've got a uh, pattern paper with pattern on both sides of the paper. But if you don't, it's no problem at all. What I've done is I've measured a line down the center. So where Kendra recommends that you cut a line down anyway. And from that point, drawn a line out to the corner on each, the top and bottom of the card. I was then trying to figure out exactly what sort of shape I need to cut out <laughs> uh, to go on the other side of the paper, but uh, you can really just cut out the exact same triangle on your other piece of pattern paper and then just cut down the middle and you can either do that by tracing it or measuring it, doesn't matter. It'll <laughs> 
And if it's all a bit complicated, that's okay as well. You can simply just either cut out the triangle shape from the original piece of pattern paper or just leave it as a rectangle and that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, or if you have the double-sided pattern paper, then you can just simply cut one line down the middle and fold it over. And you can use brads or glue or something to adhere the folded paper down. And the sentiment that I'm using for this card is the Birdie Brown Greetings Galore stamp by My Favourite Things, which is a fantastic stamp set. It's really got all the basics that you need for card making. And I love how the look of this card is like a little present being opened. I really wouldn't have thought of doing this card design otherwise. Okay, so now on to sketch number eight. So for this sketch, we start off with having two squares, but we're cutting one of the squares in half. I thought it'd be easier to attach the uh, layer behind it first, so the border layer, and then cut them in half, and then just assemble them on the page. I found it a little bit challenging to line everything up properly for this card, but maybe that's just because I didn't cut my squares perfectly straight, I'm not sure. <laughs> but overall, I love the way it looks and you could certainly pop up the centre square up on foam tape if you wanted it to pop out.
For sketch number nine, we've got three flags and a strip of paper. So I feel like this card looks like a first, second or third sort of ribbon badge. <laughs> so um, I quite like the design of this card and you could certainly make some fun cards like with Mother's Day coming up, you could make it a prize sort of card for being the best mum um, and have a bit of fun with this layout. Now I originally chose this as my background paper but I ended up thinking it was too busy so you'll see later on I changed my mind and changed the actual background paper which I do quite a bit, change my mind but that's all part of the design process. And before you would have seen my cat Ollie's tail and he always likes to come and join me in my craft room occasionally as well. Maybe it was because I decided to put a bird on this card, I'm not sure. But this really cute bird is from Vicky Buton, the So Fun Pack. The sentiment that I'm using is from Reverse Confetti Simply Sentiments, which is one of my go-to sentiment packs. And to add a bit more interest to the circle in the centre of the other die, I've just cut out a circle twice, so a smaller circle first, followed by a bigger circle of the same paper, and then slightly twisted that outer circle so that the colours are different in different areas. And that's my final card. So now on to sketch number 10. Now I absolutely love this design and I love that there's three cards that we can create by cutting the papers like this and it becomes really easy to create these three cards. This is certainly going to be one of my go-to card sketches and the reason is I just love that you can see so much of the pattern paper. So if you have some pattern paper that you really like then at least you can see a lot of it where I find in some of the other card sketches it does get a little bit hidden and although that looks really nice, um, it's really, I love the fact that you can see them all here. To decorate this card, I've just cut some leaves from the Poker Doodles paper pack printed set that I have left over and the little bird I've just cut out, it's from the Poppy Stamp Styles Nestled Bird and uh, cut that out of my jelly print paper, just a leftover piece. So they're really quick and easy to create these three cards. So now on to the next one. For some of my cards you'll notice I don't actually put a sentiment on the card and there's two reasons for that, that sometimes it's just nice to give a card without a sentiment just because you want to give a card and the other reason is I like having some cards already made that when I need it for a specific occasion I can then add the sentiment that's suitable to that occasion and that person onto the card at the time I want to use it. So for this sketch, I was trying to play around with how I wanted these beautiful flowers, which are from the Altenew Peony Bouquet stamp set. 
uh, how I want them arranged so that they don't get too hidden on this card. So you'll see a bit of my process <laughs> on trying to figure out uh, the way I want them all stuck down. Hopefully with these close-ups you can see just the amount of texture and interest that's on these papers in the background that really I find often come through when you use jelly plate papers. And because these are such a nice set I thought it'd be nice to see them all next to each other. And you can imagine how you could make numerous sets like this so easily and so quickly. Okay, so on to sketch number 13. So for this sketch, I really struggle to stick everything down straight. Um, it's probably not a sketch I'll do again just because... I find it frustrating to have to get everything lined up so well. So I knew I was going to have trouble with it. So I made sure I used a glue that was really slow drying. So different to what I was using for my other ones. And that way I could keep um, peeling up the papers and slightly shifting them um, as I needed to make it all sit evenly on the card. And then I can trim any excess off the edges that I needed. So for sketch 14, I changed it slightly and didn't have the sentiment strip down the bottom as I thought these strips were really nice taking up the full area of the card. And I love the way this card turned out as well. And I think this is also one of my favorites as I can just imagine using up leftover strips of paper to make a similar type of card. And so now we're on to our lucky last sketch number 15. And this is a nice, easy one to finish up on, I think. The sentiment I used for this card was once again from the Simply Sentiments by Reverse Confetti Pack. And I just think they're great sentiments that you can really use for anyone on so many different occasions. 
So the trick to this card is just to make sure that your paper D and E is stuck down before you stick it onto the background card. So you can trim off the edges and make sure the corner lines up with the edge of the square bit of paper. And then I'm just going to set that aside to let the glue dry so I don't get glue all over my scissors and assemble the rest of the card. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you've enjoyed watching my creative process and uh, I look forward to seeing everyone else's cards on Kendra's card challenge. If you like this video, I'd absolutely love your support. Hit the like and subscribe button. It really means a lot for me and shows me if you enjoyed this video or not. And leave a comment below of which is your favorite card and card sketch. See you next time.